Amen. 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 My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. Father God, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. In the final quiet hours before Jesus is betrayed, arrested, beaten, tried, and crucified, Jesus spends an evening with his disciples. In this evening, we usually call the Last Supper, Jesus enjoys a meal with the disciples, washes their feet, and then begins to unravel everything that's going to happen over the next number of days. Some of this conversation Jesus hosts in parables and metaphor. At one point, the disciples even get frustrated about their inability to understand exactly what Jesus is saying. And so Jesus goes farther and begins to speak to them more plainly about what must happen. I share this because this conversation that oftentimes we glaze over in text, this Monday, Thursday text, uh, gives more clarity on why Jesus was so frustrated with the disciples after the resurrection. Because it wasn't like years or weeks or months or even days had passed since he told them what was going to happen. But actually it was only a few hours between the time that Jesus has this conversation while sitting at the table. He tells them that somebody's going to betray him. He tells them that they will, he will be denied. He tells them that they will arrest him. He tells them that they're going to take him. He tells them that he must go just, just out before the soldiers come to Gethsemane to take Jesus, he sits with them and has this conversation. And so it makes sense that Jesus would have expected them to be focused, full of joy, and ready to work when they seen him after the resurrection. It makes sense that when all of this was going on, that they would have kept their cool and kept their head because exactly what Jesus said was going to happen, happen. And if the bad part that Jesus said was going to happen, then it the good stuff that he told was going to happen must indeed be coming to it. It made sense that Jesus was a little bit confused because while they had uh, uh, faith that the, that the death was happening, while they had faith that the beating was happening, while Peter drew his sword and cut a soldier's ear off, I, I guess he expected that they would have had that same enthusiasm when they 
seen him walking around. Amen. I, 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 I can imagine that Jesus felt like they, they would have it all together because he had just finished telling. Have you ever had a conversation and told somebody something and then when it happened they start looking at you confused and surprised and you got to say, well, I told you what was going to happen. I, I explained to you what was about but what was about to go down. I don't understand why you're confused. I, I don't understand why your heart is so heavy. Didn't we just talk about this? Didn't I just tell you about this? Didn't we just have this conversation about what was going to happen? But I guess like most things in life, timing is everything. I, I mean, if I was honest with myself, uh, Dr. Hines, uh, 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 no matter how much I know that hard times have to come when they come, it always throws me off of my foundation. I don't know about you, uh, 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 Brother Rucker, but no matter how much I can be prepared, no matter how much I think about uh, what I'm going to do, Mike Tyson says everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. I, uh, maybe you're like Mike Tyson and you, you knew what was coming and you knew how hard it was going to be but when the punch in the face came you did not know what to do you could not compose yourself when the doctor's report came even though God said you will be sick but it will not be unto death when the doctor's report came you did not know how to keep yourself from crying you forgot what Jesus told you uh, 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 when the bad grace came from your child uh, you forgot that Jesus told you that he made this child everything that no matter how informed we are, no matter how prepared we are, no matter how much of the story we already know that when the hard part comes, when we lose someone that we love, when we go through a trial that we knew was coming somehow, it still is difficult to keep our mind about us. It still is difficult to stay positive. It's still difficult to stay focused. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even though Jesus had just told them What was about to happen? Even though they knew the beginning, uh -huh. the middle, uh -huh. and the end, uh -huh. the disciples still found themselves bewildered, confused, destitute, and traumatized. But this morning, I want to offer a small perspective of hope. Uh, because immediately after the conversation, the meal, the foot washing, this morning's text says that Jesus prayed for his disciples. Tell somebody Jesus prayed for you. Now, Mother Flag, I don't know if you've ever had somebody pray for you. But I've been prayed for by a lot of people. I've been prayed by by mother for by mothers and grandmothers. I, I've been prayed for by my wife. I've been prayed for by church folks. I've been prayed for by bishops, potentates, and, 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 and really important people. I, I've been prayed for by babies and children. I, I've been prayed for. I don't know if you've ever been prayed for. I mean, have you ever had somebody really pray for you? Anybody? Just just throw your hands up. Just, just give me a shout if, if you've ever had Somebody pray for you. My mother prayed for me. Had me on her mind. Took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. It just it makes me want to sing in my heart. Pray for me. My father prayed for me. Had me on his mind. Took the time. Pray for me. 
See, see you, you, you understand then when, when somebody prays for you that you're on their mind, that they're thinking about your situation, that they, they know about your challenge, that even if they don't know everything that you're going through, that they're going before the Lord. I don't know if you've ever had the prayer team pray for you, but there's just something about if one of the prayer team tells you that they're praying for your situation, you can just walk a little straighter and walk a little stronger. The challenges and fears you might have had before when somebody says, I've been praying for you. You just feel a little better when somebody says, I prayed for you. You know everything is going to be all right, especially when there's somebody you know can get a prayer through. I mean, have you ever, just somebody who you knew uh, that they had Jesus' personal phone number. Not, not like, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you all this. Uh, two weeks ago when we had the prayer vigil, uh, I'm not going to call nobody's name out, but somebody came and said, uh, I came and I told pastor, uh, I wasn't actually coming for you to pray for me. I'm not going to call nobody out. If you were there, you know who I'm talking about. You can tell her I'm talking about her. Uh, they said, I actually came so your mama could pray for me. Uh, have you ever known I know who I got to go to to get the prayer through? Uh, I, 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 because I know if Sister Ann prays for me, that some good shouting is about to happen. I know, I know if, if, if Sister Bonnie prays for me that my situation is going to be okay because I know that they know that they know that they know that they know Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, Pastor, when you call on him, he might think you're calling about a sermon. But 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 when 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 Sister LaVoy calls on him, when Sister uh, uh, Jeanette calls on him, I, I know that he's expecting that some work is about to get done. I, I, Somebody you know, know Jesus. Somebody you know who talk to him all the time. Somebody you know who hang out with him. You, when they, they friends with him. Yes, sir. Get a little dick They, they on a first name basis. Brother Carmen, you know what I'm talking about. It's just certain folks you know yes, sir. that if they look like they open their mouth, Jesus. You said something? Yes, no. You called me? Oh, I thought you called me. Yes, sir. It's about to get ready. But if that's how we feel, when regular folk pray for us. If that's how we feel, if the prayer team prays for us. If that's how we feel, if the pastor prays for us. Can you imagine the power we should have with Jesus praying for us. I, I just want to encourage somebody this morning that if you think you've ever been prayed for before, you ain't seen nothing until Jesus prays for you. Uh, all throughout the prayer, he says, Father, Daddy, Baba, I, I'm calling you on behalf of my friend, my, my daddy. I'm calling you on behalf of my sister, Daddy. I'm calling you on behalf of my mother, Daddy. I'm calling you on behalf. When Jesus prays for you. I mean, my mama can pray. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You heard her up there. She know all the word, but 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 when Jesus prays for you. Oh, hallelujah. When Jesus prays for you. Something has to be different. Yes, sir. Jesus prayed for me. Yes, 
have me on his mind. That's the that part right there. I think that's the part that makes it uh, because so many people walk through the world believing that nobody's thinking about them. And so just the idea that somebody not only thought about me, but put the thought in their head into words and not words just for anybody, but words to go from their mouth to God's ears. There's just something that already makes me feel good. Something that already lets me know that everything is going to be just to know that you've been thinking about me and hearing about my situation and you thought enough about I know a lot of busy people and if you could imagine how busy Jesus might be y'all know how we are I mean we go to Jesus about everything we go to Jesus about stuff we really could handle our own uh, but Jesus thinks enough about us to pray for us. Yes. Tell somebody, Jesus is praying for you. Jesus is praying for you. This morning scripture is probably what is more rightly defined as the Lord's Prayer. Uh, this is the final corporate prayer that Jesus prays. Uh, before he goes into the garden for his private prayer. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, this is uh, the final prayer that he gives in front of his disciples before he asks them to stay awake and labor with him while he goes to have a personal conversation. You know, you can't let everybody hear your deepest prayers. You say, y'all stay back there because I now need, I prayed for y'all. Now I need to go talk to my daddy about me. Uh, yes, sir. So, yes, sir. This prayer is broken down into three sections. Uh, the first is a prayer for glorification. The second is a prayer for fortification. And the third is a prayer of anticipation. Uh, the prayer for glorification, Jesus is establishing that he has done what God sent him there to do. He's saying, I've come down and done all of the things that you sent me to do. And now I'm asking, Father, that you would bring me back so that I could return to the glory that I once had before I came down to earth. The prayer of glorification is really just Jesus checking in with God to say, I've done all the things that I'm supposed to do and I'm ready to come back home now. You understand with that glorification. I'm ready to get my medal. I'm ready to, to be celebrated. I'm ready to be lifted up. I'm ready to be exalted I did everything that you said do as a matter of fact even the stuff that went wrong you already knew I have not lost any of my disciples they're all still here they're all still faithful they're all still ready I have not done anything outside of your will and so the prayer of glorification is just Jesus's finally final check-in before he goes through his trials the prayer of fortification, Jesus then lifts up his disciples. In the prayer of fortification, Jesus is now praying uh, that they would be equipped, strengthened, and empowered for the ministry that they're about to be sent out to do. The prayer of fortification is to make sure that the same power that he exhibited while they were with him that they would be carrying out the work that they were doing with that power. The prayer of fortification is to ensure that they go and that they are kept safe as they are on their journey. The prayer of fortification is so that they will stay encouraged even when the world turns against them. The prayer of fortification is also to validate the disciples to say just like I did what I'm supposed to do they're going to do what they're supposed to do and so Lord if you would watch over them if you would keep them uh, this is for the disciples that are with him right now this ain't about us yet I just want to help somebody out I know sometimes we read those types of scriptures and we think oh Jesus is talking about me no he's not talking about you just yet he's only talking about the folks that were literally physically there with him but that's okay because after the prayer uh, for the folks that are physically there with him Jesus opens up this next part of scripture where we open today my prayer is not for the disciples alone but I pray for those who believe in me through their message guess who that is oh my god I thought you would be shouting right now because that's the prayer where Jesus called my name he said I pray for you not just for John and not just for Peter but I'm praying for brother Cartwright I, I'm not just praying for Theophilus I, I'm not just praying for for uh for Luke I, I, I'm praying Sister Shelly, I'm not just praying for Mary. I'm not just praying for Mary, but I'm praying for Brother Gary. This prayer is for you and 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 for me too. I'm so excited about this last couple of verses because it says that Jesus didn't forget about 
me. I'm so excited about these last couple of verses because it said that Jesus thought about me even before I was in my mother's womb. I'm so excited this morning. Hallelujah. That after Jesus prays for himself, after Jesus prays for his friends, that he had me on his mind and prayed for me. Yes. Thank you. Can you imagine that Jesus had time to think thousands of years in the future just for you? Can, would, would, would you just let that sit in your spirit, how important you must be to Jesus, that even though he's about to go through all of this craziness, even though he's about to go through all this pain, that even though he's about to go through all of this hurt, that even though he's about to go through all of this turmoil, that he thought enough of you and me to pause and say, not only my disciples, not only me, but also for Sister Lavoie, also for Sister Lyric, also for Baby Grace. Also for Lena Baker. Also for Essie Brown. Also for Brother Mark. Also for Sister D. Also for Brother Reggie. Also for Sister Dana. Also for Sister Jeanette. Also for Sister Gallo. Also for Reverend Gallo. I, can you just, I, I'm so grateful that in Jesus' critical time that he did not think it robbery to think of me too. The prayer of glorification about him. The prayer of fortification about the disciples. But the prayer of anticipation about you and me. About anybody who would hear the report. Anyone who would hear the gospel that God would bless them too. The prayer of anticipation is for anyone that would believe from Pentecost all the way to Parks Chapel. For anyone who would believe from Peter to Kirkpatrick. And for anyone who would call on the name of Jesus. So this morning I just came because I'm so happy that not just anybody, not just somebody, but that Jesus prayed for me. Tell somebody, Jesus prayed for me. Find one more person. Tell them, Jesus prayed for me. Now find one other person you can encourage and tell them, Jesus prayed for you too. That's why I don't care if y'all pray for me or not. You shouldn't either. <laughs> you gotta pray for me. Jesus prayed for me. You could talk about me. Jesus prayed for me. You could lie on me. Jesus prayed for me. You could be mad at me. Jesus prayed for me. Yes. So finally, what did Jesus pray for? He prayed that we would be unified, that we would be welcomed, that we would be loved, and that we would have God's love in us. Yes. 
that we would be unified, welcomed, loved, and that his love would be in us. This is why Jesus says the way that they will know us is in how we love one another. Because what he asked his father to do was to impart the same love that was in him in us. And so if we do not have love, it's impossible for us to be of God because that's what Christ prayed that we would receive. And if we believe that God hears Jesus' prayer, then it is impossible that we can walk around this world without the love of God in us because that's what he asked his daddy to do. That we would be unified. He says, Lord, I lift them up that they would be one. Again, this prayer is to prepare the disciples to go out and build the church. Who is the church? We are the church. Church is in our hearts. And we come to share the love of Jesus Christ. And so it becomes impossible to do what God has called us to do if we are not unified. And so Jesus understood that we would have to be on the same page, of the same mind, of the same heart, under the same love. Because what it was going to take to turn the world around, what it was going to take to save souls required that we would be on one accord. One accord. Yes. Yes, sir. Be ye all of one mind. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Praise that we would be unified. Praise that we would be welcomed. He says, Father, bring them into my glory so that they can see. See, Jesus, remember the, guy, the brother on the cross? He says, you'll be with me in paradise. He, Jesus wants to make sure that we're included in the final number because he doesn't want us to just have to take for granted that whatever the scripture says happens is going to happen. But he says, no, if they believe in me, they deserve to get to see my glory. They, they deserve to get to see that what I promised them was going to happen, happens. They, I, I want to make sure that they can get in at the door. I want them to be unified. Yes, sir. I want to make sure they can get into the house. Yes. Then he says, I want them to be loved. Yes. This morning, maybe you've been walking around feeling unloved. I want you to know Jesus is praying for you. Uh, and that one of his prayers is that you are loved. And so maybe the place where you are, you are not loved by the people there. But I want you to know that you're loved by Jesus. Uh, uh, maybe the, the relationship that you're in right now, you don't feel loved. But I want you to know that you're loved by Jesus. Maybe the situation and circumstance you might be feeling, you are not deserving of love right now. But I want you to know that you're loved by Jesus. And because folks at Parks Chapel love Jesus, we love you too. Because because folks at Park Chapel are called by Jesus. We love you too because we're hoping for the same love that you are. We don't have no choice but to love you too. Jesus called his father and said, I pray that they would be loved. Not just any kind of love, but agape love. Unfailing love unwavering love yes. holy love yes, sir. pray that we would be unified mm -hmm. pray that we would be welcomed pray that we would be loved and then finally he prays that God's love would be in us right. yeah. ah, this is the one we struggle with Not that we don't want it to be in us, but that we position ourselves to let it out. Jesus' prayer for us is for the continuity of the growing of the body of Christ. Which meant that for thousands of years, what has to happen is that the same love that he shared with his disciples 
had to be deposited in the ones who the disciples shared the message with. And then the people that they shared the message with, the same love they had to deposit in the folks that they shared the message with. And then the folks that they shared the message with, that same love had to be inside of the folks that they shared the message with. And so what I'm saying is that we're not really doing God's work if we don't love somebody. That we can't call ourselves the church if we don't love. That we are actually pushing Jesus' prayer away if we are not loving one another. If we are not loving God's people. If we're not loving the children if we're not loving the beaten the broken down and the forgotten the word says that Jesus's final prayer for you and I was that the same spirit the same love the same power that was in him would be in us he says I want that they would dwell in me as I dwell in you I don't know what you're going through and I don't know who you've had praying for you and over you but this morning whether it's been really holy folks or nobody at all I want you walking out knowing that Jesus prayed for you. He saw you right here, right now. And he lifted up a prayer so that you would be covered, protected, and empowered. And all we have to do is believe. And so I invite you to stand up on your feet as we give God praise. And I want to open up the doors of the church. Maybe you're worshiping with us this morning. And you actually have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've not prayed the prayer of salvation and invited him into your heart. If that's you this morning, then I want to invite you to come and give me your hand, but give God your heart. Come and with a sincere heart, we'll say the prayer of salvation together. And in that moment, you are covered by his blood and included in his prayer. Or maybe you're worshiping with us this morning and you know Jesus, you have relationship, but you've been looking for a place to make your church home. You've been looking for a family, a community to work through your soul salvation. I can't think of a better place for you to be than here at Parks Chapel. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so the doors of the church are open this morning. We welcome anyone that would come to give your life to Christ or to join us here in fellowship. Is there one this morning? Is there one that would come? The doors are open. Amen. Let's give God praise. Thank you for such amazing spirits of worship this morning. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want you to know all week somebody's praying for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Uh, again, I want to encourage you to show up over these next couple of weeks. Support our lay organization. Amen. Support our young people. Amen. Uh, but most of all, support yourself. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Don't forsake the fellowship of believers. Come get prayed for. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
share the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and the love of a mighty good God rest, rule, and abide in your life now and forever. And those that believe said, Oh!